guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. First one is titled, Entitled B Wants My Parking Spot. A few decades ago, I went from 70 to 0 too fast one night and ended up in the hospital with a pen in my teeth signing a form on a clipboard held over my head that they could cut off both of my hands and my right leg because they were all so mangled that there was a less than 50% chance of them being saved. 18 hours of surgery and I woke up with everything I went in there with and a few extra metal parts to boot, but it took years and a couple of dedicated physical therapists, whom I lovingly referred to as Helga and Ursula the Witch Goddesses for me to be able to walk and use my reconstructed hands. I've had four follow-up surgeries since then, and I can now walk without a limp, but it's still difficult to walk very far without pain, so I have a handicap placard on my car. I found out real quick that there's an attitude among handicap placard owners. They all seem to think that they're more deserving than you of the spot that you just parked in, that plus FedEx drivers use them indiscriminately. My first experience with FedEx was when I went to get my name registered on the sewer and water utilities for the house we just moved to. There was only one handicapped spot and a FedEx delivery truck was parked in it. So I parked sideways and blocked him and then hobbled my way into the building with my cane. I was still in physical therapy then. About five minutes later, I see the FedEx guy come up. FedEx guy, who owns the silver infinity outside. Me? That would be me. FedEx guy? You're blocking me in? Me? You parked in the handicapped spot. FedEx guy. I was only going to be there a few minutes. Me? Well, now you're going to be there until I finish my business here. FedEx guy. You can't do that. Me? We can call the sheriff and see which one of us gets a ticket. But the entitled B portion of the story happened a few years later. By then, I was able to walk without my cane and I had encountered more than one of these, so I knew it was about to happen and I had prepared my response ahead of time. I had just parked and gotten out of my car and was walking into Wally World when I see the Cadillac moving slowly by with the window rolling down and the EB about to lay out her case on why she deserved my spot, and I didn't. Eb, what's your problem? Me? Excuse me. Eb, you don't look like you're handicapped. Me? Thank you. I've worked really hard to be able to walk without a limp. Eb, I don't think you're really handicapped. Me? You could have stopped talking after the first three words of that last sentence and been entirely correct. Eb, so, what's wrong with you? Me, sigh if you must know, I lost my foot in an accident. Eb, really, how did that happen? Me, I broke it off in some nosy witch's ass. Next one is titled, Entitled Woman Pulls the Emergency Brake on a Train. About 15 years ago, my husband and I had a Karen experience we will never forget. We had gone to downtown Chicago on the train to visit the Museum of Science and Industry for the day. On the way home, there were two trains leaving that we could have taken. One was the Express, leaving at 525. The Express only stopped at a few of the stops and skipped the rest. The local train left at 535 and stopped at all the stops along the line. We got on the Express because it stopped at our stop, which was towards the end of the line. We're sitting in the train car and the train crew announces each station stop and the next stop as we are going along. We see a woman get up and start walking towards the conductor. She's got the I want to speak to your manager haircut and other markings of the wild Karen. She goes up to the conductor and says something like, is this train stopping at Willowbrook? I need to get off at Willowbrook. This was 15 years ago, so it's not exact, but it is what I remember. The conductor turns to her and says, mom, this is the express train. We do not stop at Willowbrook. You'll have to get off at the next stop and call someone from the station or take a taxi to Willowbrook if you need to get your car. She starts screaming, no, I need to get off at Willowbrook. You need to stop this train now. The conductor says, mom, we cannot stop this train. It is the express. You'll need to get off at the next stop. Hearing this, Karen freaks out and starts screaming, I will stop this train. She eyes the emergency brake, sensing what she is about to do. The conductor says, Mom, if you pull that brake, it is a felony and you will be arrested. Karen shrieks, but it's an emergency. As she pulls the emergency cord, 
The train lurches as the emergency brake engages. Karen starts walking towards the door of the train car, screaming, Open this door now. The conductor says, Mom, I cannot open this door. We are not at a station. You have stopped this train when there is not an emergency. Now, we need to wait for the police. Karen screams, Open this door now. The conductor gets on his radio and asks for backup and for the police to be called. Karen continues to shriek, Open this door. I need my car. Let me out. A few minutes later, Police arrive on scene lights and sirens flashing. The conductor opens the train door. As soon as the door opens, Karen makes a run for it. The conductor says to the cops, that's her, the one who pulled the brake. Stop her. The cops chase after Karen and I don't know quite what happened next, as I couldn't see from my seat on the train. However, as the train started moving a few minutes later, I did get a good glimpse of Karen sitting in the back of a squad car. And that's the story of how one entitled Karen inconvenienced a whole trainload of people, maybe even two, if she delayed the other train, because she got on the wrong train. Next one is titled, Someone's Dying But Hey, Karen Is Cold. I don't know, sometimes I lose faith in basic humanity. Some people seem to be entirely oblivious to their surroundings and fellow human beings. After another Karen experience today, I remembered this piece of human decay, as a med student, I have to do a lot of internships in different kinds of hospitals and wards. The very first internship I did was on a trauma surgery slash neurology ward, so a mixture of people who sprained their ankle badly enough to need surgery and people who just had a massive stroke and couldn't do anything anymore. Needless to say, everyone was stressed. During the second week of my four-week stay, I went into one of the double rooms early in the morning to check vitals, etc. I realized one of the two patients, maybe in her 60s, was non-responsive when I tried to wake her up. She wouldn't answer, barely seemed to notice my presence, her skin was cold and looked almost gray, her breathing was very low. I pressed the alarm button and quickly checked all her vitals, it seemed like she was dying. This was unexpected, she was admitted because she fell and broke something, as far as I recall, and all her vitals had been okay the day before. The head nurse rushed in and saw what I saw. She immediately called the attending doctor and the emergency team, about five people rushed to help. We did everything to facilitate the woman's breathing and try to stabilize her, but I felt her limbs getting colder. Can't you be at least a little quieter? You're not the only ones in this room. And someone close that window? I am cold. This is outrageous. I was so busy with the dying patient that I entirely forgot about Mega Karen with her broken arm in the other bed in that room. She had already screamed at me the previous day because the coffee I distributed was too hot and little Kate that came with it had been too dry. But this was a new low. There was her roommate dying less than three meter away from her, but she was bothered by the noise. You should have seen the stare she received by the emergency doctor. I for sure would have dropped dead immediately. But for her it was just enough to mumble some profanities to herself and leave us be. Next one is titled. Entitled B thinks she can walk in the middle of the grocery store parking lot. This happened like an hour ago. I pulled into the grocery store parking lot and was browsing for a parking space. Kind of hard to explain, but the parking lot is one that you can only go one way, then turn, and the next row, you can only go the opposite direction and so on. As I'm searching for a space, EB exits her car and literally starts walking in the middle of the road in front of me. I was already driving pretty slow out of respect for the other pedestrians that were walking along the side of the road like normal people towards the store entrance. There unfortunately was no parking spots available in that row, so I had to slow down even more for EB and was trailing about 10 foot behind her going about 2 mph I would guess. I obviously was a little annoyed at EB, but the turn to get out of that row was near so I just kept driving. Out of nowhere, EB turns around while she's walking and throws her hands up in a what? Motion and yells something at me. I just stared at this witch from inside my car like she was on crack. She turns back around and continues walking in the middle of the road like a dumbass and here I am just trailing behind her trying to drive slow and keep my car at a distance. There was also a car behind me so that person was probably like WTF too. She kept turning around and yelling at me until she went inside the store and I turned into the next road to search for a spot and eventually found one. By that time my anxiety was through the roof because I'm not a confrontational person and I was scared to run into EB in the store. Luckily, all was well and I didn't see her, but hopefully she gets taught a lesson someday. Edit. I would completely understand her being upset if I was about to hit her, in the butt with the front of my car, 
but I was a reasonable distance from her considering she was in the way in blocking traffic. Next one is titled, Son, I've been in the Navy for 40 years. A call center is a trove of Karens and Carmens, male Karen. And this is one that tops the stories I tell my friends. This was 10 years ago while working in a call center for a very popular shoe company. I was a team lead, the next step above it supervisor when you asked for one. And a supervisor escalated a call to me from someone in the US Navy. Let's call him John Douche, trust me, it needs a first and last name. Since it was an ongoing issue, I was fully aware of the situation. This is how the conversation went. Me? Thank you, agent. Hello, Mr. Douche. May I call you John? JD? No, you may not. Son, I've spent over 40 years in the US Navy to work my way up to the rank of Butt Kisser, so I will not be addressed by anything other than Butt Kisser John Douche. Me? Okay, I'm sorry, sir. From JD? No, did you not hear me? You will address me as Butt Kisser John Douche. Not sir, not Kisser, not Butt Kisser, only Butt Kisser John Douche. Now, according to Google, his real rank was really high up, extremely high up. I'll just refer to him as douche in here, but just imagine every time having to say his rank in full name. Me, I'm sorry douche. From what I understand, you ordered a pair of shoes and weren't received. We have since sent you two replacement pairs of shoes that you are also claiming weren't delivered. JD, yes, I want another pair sent out. Now, you need to know something about shipping something via FedEx to the military. Our distribution facility was in the southeast U.S., and all FedEx shipments for the military from this region would go to the MSBS hub in New York before the military takes over and delivers the package to the military address. Once it is delivered to the MSBS, there is nothing more we can do, so the package would be considered successfully delivered. Me, I understand what you are wanting, douche, but, as the agent had informed you, we are unable to send out a fourth pair as we show all three previous packages were successfully delivered to the military postal hub, MSBS, in New York and were signed for. JD. But I did not receive it. Me? That is a problem for the MSBS. Due to it being the military system, we cannot track the package past this point and since it was delivered to the MSPS, we consider it successfully delivered. At this point, it is the responsibility of the Military Postal Service to deliver the package. JD, so you aren't going to send me another pair. I've been in the Navy for 40 years and have never had an issue before. Me, I'm sorry douche, but there is nothing further I can do, nor is there anything that can be done moving forward. If you want another pair of shoes shipped out, you will need to order a new pair. I will also be putting a note on your file that under no circumstance is another pair of replacements be sent out for this order or future orders without corporate approval. With that being said, is there anything more I can do for you, douche? JD, I want your manager. Me, sorry, douche, but I am the highest level of support you can get through the customer support line at the website. Click. One of the joys of being a team lead is when douche asked for my manager. I could legitimately say there's nobody higher than me, have a problem with that, you'll need to contact our corporate office. I sent corporate the case file and the call logs. He got nothing from them too. Considering how high a rank he told me he was, I highly doubt he achieved that rank. I bet it was some lower rank service member who tried to increase his rank to push around someone and get his way. Last one is titled. Entitled princess wants my sister to kick out my dad so she can have his house. My sister and brother-in-law own the house my parents have been living in. Back in the spring, my mom suffered several strokes and a heart attack in a matter of weeks, leaving her in a bad physical state. My dad began caring for my mom 24-7. My dad's father passed away during the summer, and somehow in the funeral and family gatherings, both of my parents got COVID. My dad was fully vaccinated, but my mom was not due to her health issues. My mom's health severely declined and my dad had to make the tough decision to put her into a nursing facility that could provide proper long-term care. When my mom went into the nursing home, my dad decided to stay with his mother for a while. It was a good setup since my dad's mom was newly widowed and lived near my mom's nursing facility. Meanwhile, my sister's SIL got a divorce. She and her ex decided to sell the house they had lived in with their four kids. She was given a certain very reasonable length of time to find another house for her and her kids and move. Moving day came and SIL had no house. Instead of looking for a house over the weeks before the deadline, SIL took a vacation with her new boyfriend. She was ready with a sob story about how she had no money. She's never worked a day in her life. 
while she used her alimony check for Bodox. She also gets child support for her four brats. She won't move in with the boyfriend because that would put an end to her alimony dollars, so she takes her four crotch goblins and moves into a hotel. Since no one has stepped up and offered her a free set of house keys, SIL sets her sights on the house my parents have been living in. SIL and her mom start blowing up my sister's phone wanting to know why my dad hasn't moved out of the house yet. My dad is grieving the loss of his father and dealing with my mom's poor health, taking care of his mother, and working a full-time job. He has to go through a lifetime's worth of personal items, furniture, etc. before he can go anywhere. That's not good enough for SIL and MIL, and they pitch a fit basically demanding that my sister and BIL throw my dad out of the house they own because SIL needs it. Hoo hoo. SIL is an entitled princess who is used to getting her way and having things handed to her. She's 35 years old but behaves like a spoiled child. Imagine the level of selfishness it takes to demand that a grieving man be tossed out of his home because this entitled witch was too irresponsible and lazy to get out and find a house for herself and her kids. Thanks for listening.